Haney, Haney Rio, this is El Rio. Welcome back to our live streams, our live vlogs. And I've been getting really good positive feedbacks on the live vlogs. So it's a really good, cool thing that y'all are actually sharing with us on the forums, Pathfinders too, and on the podcast. Thank you so much for all of your positive reviews and feedback. So this stream, we're going to be talking about astral travels for the overactive minds. And we have this for a blog post, I'm sorry, a forum post on the site that is posted by... Tony. So this is what she wrote for her forum post. I'm curious to learn how people who have in a hard time focusing, for example, people with ADHD, GAD, OCD, etc., approach meditation and specifically astral travel. So that is basically her asking if there's any way that we can actually go and ask travel for overactive minds and yes there is because i do have these disabilities um a learning disability and i do have adhd and add and ocd so of course i'm going to be sharing my thoughts my feelings methods into astral travel for you guys so let's get started if you guys haven't yet if you guys are joining the stream you know, later on, um, and you guys are viewing this as a pre-recorded, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button and give me a thumbs up if y'all love astral travels. Hey Candy, how are you? So, for overactive minds, I would, especially with ADHD and ADD, usually I would, for astral travels, there has to be purpose. So our purpose is for communication, right? And yes, we are going to, you are going to be able to see your beings and or communicate with your beings in the astral plane. So with that, with the whole lucid dreaming courses and with the Pathfinders taking the lucid dream courses and actually having an open dialogue with lucid dreaming, um, that is your segue into going into astral travels. So for people that can't concentrate, especially going into um, astral travels first let's start off by meditation all right in some instances i need my light I'm like flush i don't have the ring light on right now because i don't know um so for um meditation usually i will tell the pathfinders and my clients uh especially who have ADD and ADHD, is to figure out everything before you go into a meditative state. So if you know that you need to do your vices, go ahead and do your vices beforehand or don't do it at all, knowing that you can do it after when you are finished with your astral travel or even lucid dreaming or even, as this case, meditation. Make sure that your obligations are done. Um, Anybody who has a full schedule, especially a person who has ADD, in order for me to be able to do my other duties and my other hobbies or meditation is if I finish everything off of my schedule. So it's really great to bookkeep, to actually have an organizer, to utilize your cell phones. If you guys are viewing me from your cell phones, there's apps out there that actually help you into being better organized. There's bullet journaling. Bullet journaling too is a really, really good way for you guys to actually stay organized and to actually manifest your laws of attraction, your vision boards and your affirmations all in that bullet journal. And there's plenty of ways to do your own bullet journal. You don't have to spend a lot of money on bullet journals when you can just make it yourself. And when I tell Pathfinders to do your bullet journal, it's because you're putting your own energies into making different sections, different clouds, different listings, different goals that you want to accomplish and referencing that back. The bullet journal is also concise, so you don't have to put a lot of stuff down in your bullet journal. You just have to have keywords, key sentences, and key listings on what you want to accomplish during your week, day, 
um, or month. So you can always reference that back too. Um, with meditation too, um, and clearing out your schedule, make sure that you have no interruptions. A lot of times people that have ADD, ADHD, OCD, or can't focus, they're very, they're obligated to do something else due to the fact that you don't have a free schedule. Perhaps maybe your friends wants to come over. Perhaps maybe you have children. Perhaps maybe you have a significant other. Whatever the variables may be, you need to free up that schedule and you need to make time for yourself and for your keep. And if you need to talk to your keep about freeing up your schedule or talk to your employer for a personal day, talk to your family, it's like, I want to do this personally for me, Go ahead and do so. In fact, a lot of people that I know, guys, actually um, go into a hotel for them to actually do and focus on their meditation. Any motels, hotels, um, for a day. And it'll be a really good escape for you guys to actually getting to know um, yourself and getting to be with your own thoughts if you live a hectic life. Meditation too in your car. You can always opt out for the car. You have um, a silent place for you to concentrate. However, with temptations and impulses with ADD and ADHD and even OCD, you are kind of tempted to drive somewhere wherever you want to go. Or, you know, if a phone, if you get a phone call and someone wants you to pick them up, well, you have to cater to their. Um, schedules too. So there's a lot of different variables that can actually counteract you into having a really good um, astral travel. Now, different methods are for different people. For me, meditation starts out with meditation. And if you have no other sources to actually go into the, in the meditative state, hey, Fox Nissy, how are you? If you don't have time to actually go into a meditative state, um, you should definitely um, make time. You should definitely make time. I don't care if you have to go to the park by yourself with your kids, but make sure that you have an eye on your kids, guys. Like, don't be losing kids. <laughs> um, we're just talking about stages and actually going into astral projection um, for the overactive minds. And I think that you posted it on the, on, on the forum. So this is a question that we're going to be answering for you. <laughs> um, so the first stage, Fox, just reiterating from what we were saying, we're talking about meditation. The segue into astral travel. Well, the first segue is actually lucid dreaming. Well, the first first will be meditation. Yeah, go ahead and lose your kid. <laughs> Of all the videos to be late too, yeah. So um, it starts out with especially having overactive mind starting to do your meditation, and with that, with overactive minds, I was telling everyone that everyone should be should have a clear schedule, and it all starts with organization. So with organization, um, and kind of looking into your schedule. Once you beat off and everything that's on your schedule, then you have time. When we are more stressed, we cannot meditate and we cannot go on astral travels. We can't even lucid dream because our brains are going 100 miles per hour, especially if you have ADD, ADHD, and OCD like me. Our minds are usually targeted or there is an insecurity sometimes. So you need to make sure that you focus on those insecurities and solve them before you go into astral travel. Because if you keep on thinking about bills and money and finances and work and family and friends and just stuff that will actually taint you from actually going to astral travels, then you can't actually astral travel. The next stage for the meditation too, it, once you finish clearing off your schedules and finding a really great space for you to actually meditate, next is actually doing breathing exercises as well. So if you guys take yoga, go ahead and try doing yoga, but breathing, medita um, breathing exercises. 
I do just a deep breath in and out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose and out to the mouth. Sometimes I just concentrate on my breathing, especially if my brain is overactive and I'm thinking about all this stuff. Just focus on your breathing. And what helps me is if I don't breathe, I will die. So I just, what I just focus on. So, you know, you don't want to be dead. So I'll just keep on breathing. And then keep on doing that. Now you can actually, if you want to close your eyes, you can definitely close your eyes when you're in your meditation. And then just focus on your path, okay? Or you can do a journey. Depending on whatever you want to do, you can do. So go ahead and figure out what your goal is for this meditation to find your inner self, to find um, an answer to something. Go ahead and figure out what you want to do in your meditation. This case, we can't really astral travel with meditation yet because you guys aren't seasoned. So if you want to focus on astral traveling, Perhaps maybe you will be in that realm as when you meditate. People do go into the astral plane when they do meditate without having to lay down. I, on the other hand, have to lay down. So <laughs> once you figure out how to meditate and you relax, now go on to the astral travel itself. Now that you, and make sure that you free up your schedule so that your mind doesn't focus on the schedule. Make sure that you're, that you tell people that you're taking a personal day. And if you're in secret or if you're in a family or a household or you're rooming with somebody, make sure that you can either, either tell them what's going on or find another place for the meditation. A park is a really great one too. Um, now, since you have that, lay down. Usually I tell people to lay down, and with this is kind of like journey work in a way. However, this is how I'm going to tell you guys how to do this. So everyone with overactive imaginations and minds and just hyperactive thinking, figure out what you want. Figure out, try to put yourself in the position of your idol sometimes, or... Put yourself in the position of a seasoned astral traveler. We need to really, for especially when I started, I had to block out everything. I forgot about my um, about my marriage. I forgot about you know my family. I for that's what helped me. I forgot a lot about people so that I don't stress. Usually it's with stressful situations. I'm not saying that my marriage is stressful. No, no, no. I'm saying that since I'm always thinking about my family, I need to really not think about them right now. And I need to join the astral plane with my keep. So make sure that you talk to your keep too, that you're going on an astral travel to go see them or to have fun with them on an astral plane or to further your path into astral traveling. So once you actually do that and you are laying down, I usually envision and imagine um, every, so your whole body needs to relax, I'm sorry. So the whole body needs to be relaxed. And you can do these different exercises by looking at different yoga methods on YouTube or on courses or on classes. Um, and also freeing up your mind to like everything should be feeling numb. All right. You're not supposed to feel any sensation. If you twitch, well, don't twitch. Okay. <laughs> don't be twitching. Um, sometimes people tend to itch. Um, once you itch, you kind of are going to be waking up from a very relaxed state of mind. So I would tell people to shower. Um, I would tell people to for ash projection whoever are using vices, legal vices, in order for them to go to the other side of the astral plane, do your consumptions. I'm not your parent. I'm not, I'm not the law. Do what you guys feel fit that it is safe and that is legal. Okay. So, um, give me one second. They are like yelling outside. Um, so once you relax your whole body, then it comes envisioning. 
And this is when you can let your imagination kick in. Usually I would get references from other movies and this, your ADD, ADHD, and your overactive mind actually will benefit from actually visualizing smoke or either electricity starting from the bottom of your, like visualize it, starting from your toes, working your way all the way up to your head. Once you are in that relaxative mind and, rela and, and relaxing and actually envisioning the smoke, electricity, or ever power energy sources that starts from your foot, working your way up to the heart chakra and then the crown chakra, then you will reach a state of paralysis. So once you reach the state of paralysis, it's kind of frightening. Um, and now your hyperactive mind is going to be scared. So no more about thinking about other things. Now your body is in crisis mode right now. Your brain is in crisis mode. It's wondering how it's, it's trying to send senses for you to wake up. Once you know that you can't move your body or wake up from the paralysis, now it's time for you to envision a rope or a ladder coming down from the ceiling and you pulling your way up from it. That's how it worked for me. Actually, it was a cord for me. It wasn't a ladder. A lot of people said a ladder. Um, where? I didn't see no ladder. But I had to envision a cord, a rope, and pulled myself up from my... The first time I did, I had to pull myself out of my body. Then comes you being acclimated to the astral plane. So when you pull yourself out of your body... Your mind is not going to go anywhere else instead of, oh, okay, where to go and how do I get back to my body, right? So around you, I say that it looks almost like a modern empty room with, like, it looks clinical. It looks very clinical with, like, everything's bright and stuff like that. There's sometimes in your own room or wherever you are, you won't see anything except for your bed and your body or just your body. And at times, it's sometimes floating or on a mattress, wherever it, whatever it may be. Then you know that you now are having an outer body experience. Once you look at your body, that's when you need to make sure that you're okay being the astral plane. If you're not, just just dive into your body and don't do it again until you're ready. Okay, but if you are ready. Try to move around, float around, fly around. I'm usually up in the ceiling like a crazy lunatic, right? So I, I, I'm i up in the ceiling where the lamps are. Turns out there is no lamps. And at times you might see space junk. And your overactive mind is not going to react to that because it's still reacting to what you're seeing in the astral plane. So... Go out. Go outside the door. If there's no doors, then just hit on straight out to the corridor and try to go outside. Now, a lot of people are afraid to go outside, but this is where overactive minds actually help out in you staying into, you're staying near your place of projection. Okay? So, if you are worried about you just elevating up and up and up and going away from your home, here's a way. Now you can utilize your overactive mind and kind of rear yourself towards the land that you are <laughs> astral projecting on. Or even having a cord that is connected to your physical body. Now envisioning that, you can raise up whatever you want. I usually have caution tape. I used to work um, with caution tape. So I usually have caution tape connecting me to my body so I know where to go. I can pull the strings and whatnot and, and the rope or caution tape to go to where my body is. Now in the astral world, you can either have two goals, to have fun or have an adventure in the astral plane or to seek out answers with your keyboard just in general if you are just astral projecting. Um, go on a journey and see what your true path is or surveillancing on someone else or trying to get another source of energy. Whatever it may be, there's always a motive and if there's no motive, your motive is just to have fun with your keep in the astral plane and to communicate with them. 
it will take time for you to do. It's not like instantaneously, okay, I can talk to them. Um, or getting there, it will take time. So you can't obviously do this at work in the office because then you have to have a constant state of rest and you really can't have a nap. And sometimes that 30 minutes, that's your whole lunch break, basically. So just keep that in mind. Do it when you're at home or on your free time to communicate with your keep. It's like emails or being pen pals with your keep. Um, any questions so far, by the way, guys, let me know. Okay. Um, so going with your, with your keep and looking for your keep or if your keep's already there, they're going to guide you. It is your domain. All right. There's no sanction. It's not saying, uh, it's not like it's, um, digitalized or, or it's this, think about it as decentralized, another decentralized world where there's no rules and laws and um, that's something that you can um, take advantage of, of course. And if you can't find your being, perhaps they're doing something else that's benefiting you, especially if you have a goal related um, member of your keep. Um, they're probably going and doing the task that you sent them to go do. You understand? So if you can't see them, then you'll see them when you come back or you'll see them the next time you come into the astral plane. Now, if you have a lot of keep members like I do and like we do, then sometimes it's going to be a room filled with your keep or your keep will be scattered around your home, your apartment your parents' home, wherever you are, your keep will be manifesting. And at times, I keep on telling everyone this too, and a lot of the Pathfinders kind of freak out when they see them, especially if it's a dark arts to black arts, like the Ricky Bash, like, of course it's going to look sinister, of course it's going to look creepy and, and scary, but when you react to them um, negatively, and you're scared, you might just revert back to your body and you have to do that all over again. And at times doing it all over again can be a blessing in disguise because you can you can definitely learn the features of your keep. However, you're gonna have to get acclimated to your physical body once you go back to from the astral come back from the astral plane. So where I'm going at is Where I'm going at is with astral, well, astral travel, especially for people with overactive minds, be sure you guys have, um, be sure that when you guys get scared, you kind of reel yourself back into, um, by, you just feel it. It's just, it's just a feeling. It's like, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I reacted to you I'm coming back. You know what I mean? And you feel your physical body coming back towards you. When you enter Ash. When you enter Ash, are you in your own personal room? It can be. Um, so at first, no. Um, so I have team members on here that I actually meet in the astral plane. And I actually have other conjurers who you guys will be listening to on the podcast that we actually actual travel for meetings um in the cult world we do a lot of astral traveling because especially with covid i can't meet them physically and at times with the whole network and everything i can't meet them on zoom or on live and i'm just busy with the pathfinder program and everything so i meet them in the astral world before i go to sleep um, subcon I mean, there's things that res up in my personal life, in my own space. So, so say that the spiritual space is this office that I'm astral projecting now. Some stuff will be in the astral world and some stuff wouldn't be in the astral world. And a seasoned astral traveler will call this space junk too. Because sometimes we'll, you'll see like a dome shape or a, a prism 
and it's space chunk in the middle of your room. So basically it's like a weir weird shape. It's almost like a bad code from a, from a program on the computer. So you'll have that type of things too, but if it's created um, subconsciously, you can rise up anything you want. However, it depends on who is in your keep, who is <clears throat> visiting you from the other side, if it's a a a mortal, if it's a deceased person, if it's your guides, they're gonna set the theme for you already. However, usually that's rare. So when I go to astral travels, this office is like usually like clear with a couple of totem pieces and that's like floating up right there. The Ouija board is just floating in the air where it is. And then I do have all of my idols, but that's like usually what's what's there. Um, yes, yeah, so of course you can create a lot of stuff on there. Yes, of course you can always leave the astral plane too, um, especially if it's uncomfortable for you, or let's say that there is an attack your defense from your body is going to push you right back into your body or your keep is going to help at times too when we can't leave we need to utilize our keep especially when we can't feel us leaving or when we have no free will when you have no free will you're stuck that's because there is either space junk near you an unbound a rogue an astral unbound an astral rogue or someone is messing with you in the astral plane. So when you see that, when you target it, you're going to have to utilize your, your keep. And this is why I always tell Pathfinders and just regular people to always have a warrior instinct being or warriors in your keep or um, something that's protective. Fox Um, At times, oh, let's read... In my opinion, it's just one open realm because I'm traveling to see other people and seeing other other um, friends and families in my keep. So I would say just one open realm. Okay, so when you ask to check, you are essentially projecting into. Okay, so. Yes. No, 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 never, ever, no, 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 no. Um, see, that, that, that is possible. However, I never witnessed that. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I never witnessed that. I only witnessed that in movies, to be honest. You know, movies can only be real so far. Like, you know, it can only be either fiction or a, a an amped up version of reality or spirituality. I never, you know, like, came into the world, like, when I ask project is usually in my room, and I end up, in, I start out from my room. Um, but, no, uh, usually for, when y'all get into lucid dreamings, you guys will be in two different stages and different themes. Um, in ash projection, you're projecting it wouldn't make sense if you're not, I mean, it wouldn't make sense, you know what I mean? If you kind of think about it, it wouldn't make sense for you to get out, pull out of your body, and all of a sudden you're in a forest. Like, unless if you live in the forest. Like, with no, like, walls. And at times, too, like, um, my room may look different. This may, depending on whatever my keep is, like, rising in the astral world. So sometimes I'm laying on the office couch, um, and all of a sudden there's, like, a Marachi band or something like that in the office. Or there's, like, banners because it's a keep's birthday. 
it's cute when you see it though too because like especially if you guys have like dark beings and black arts um like they're like like look so big and buff and intimidating but like they're eating like a birthday cake with <laughs> it's like the cutest thing ever it's like a gentle giant sometimes they're like gentle giants or um gentle dark arts kind of thing i don't know it's, it's just sometimes surprising it's like oh happy birthday rika bash Um, I want to say space. What? Okay, so other astral projectors, um, they have, I guess it's different. I'm not saying that, but that my account might be different than other people. However, when I go onto an astral world, it wouldn't make sense if I would have been in, like, another, um, environment. Especially if, if I'm not connected to that environment, too. You know? Maybe if I'm in a park, perhaps, or in the car, or, but yeah, like, usually, I would recommend you guys doing it at home, so you guys are familiar with your home, like, I don't know where these people get, like, going into, like, a, like, rezzing up in the forest or something like that, I was like, hmm, I don't know. Perhaps maybe they're special? Shit, I want to be special like that, too, like... <laughs> Um, but at times when you look into, like, further into, like, other books and other, um, YouTube, or even here on our courses for the Pathfinder, I actually have to travel and go see my friend, like, if I'm flying, right? Or if you're floating, you actually, usually at times you have muscle memory of where your friend is because you either drive there, you walk there, you take the bus there, you take the train there, whatever it may be, you have muscle memory, so I literally have to, if my, if my friend who is another projector is all the way, you know, on the other side of the city, then I have to go to the other side of the city to hang out with them. Or if my keep wants me to go to a particular area, I actually have to know the area first. And that's why, this might sound crazy, Fox, but we got a drone for that reason. So that I can map out the areas where I travel. Because sometimes there's things that are in the astral plane, Fox, that you can't move or you m might not be recognized. Like, you can't recognize it. So, um, usually when I need to do an investigation, I would always put a drone up in the air to know my surroundings in case if I am corrupt in a way, I can find myself in the astral plane to go somewhere else and to tell to tell people that I'm not doing good right now. Usually in possession, um, we usually, people will usually get kicked to the astral plane or they are either almost like tortured by seeing them being controlled. So in possession, when, in my case of possession, when something attempted to possess one of us or me, I got pushed out of my physical body and saw this entity in my real body. So then I had to go vet out other people. So I needed to know how to travel to different places. That's why I have a compass. Like, in case, like, the grid is down, a compass is a really good thing to have. So I go and find out other beings that can help me. And usually training especially lit, like teaching kids who are already having conversations and know how to talk if you talk, tell them how to ask project um usually in our sessions for our investigations i tell the kid if you get lost you can always find your way back home but if you get lost here's my keep member he looks a little bit scary but don't get misconstrued by this entity he is going to fly you away somewhere else and you'll be safe. And usually when you have a conversation with ch children or with teens, because teens have very, very active minds. Um, a lot of astral projectors don't tell this to people because, you know, they don't care. Um, I'm letting y'all know about the 
something can corrupt your body when you're in an astral plane. Just letting y'all know that. Something can corrupt. Like, if you're gone somewhere else and you don't have your keep member to protect you or the proper precautions to protect yourself from astral attacks, I'm sorry, you will be possessed. Um, and you can't go back to your physical body unless if your keep member or you exercise that entity out of your body, which is really easy to do, actually. It's not like you need to, you know, tie down your, your loved ones. Exorcism is not like that sometimes. And the people who actually tie up their loved ones when they think that they're possessed, we actually look down on that because that's like imprisonment and that's like torture. So what I usually suggest for if a person is thinking that they're possessed is look to see what oppressed you. There's three stages of possession. Oppression, an infestation, and a possession. So first, you are being... It's either one of those to start out first. Either oppression or an infestation. It's either one of those two in the beginning of the stages, okay? So once you know that you're oppressed, go to the underworld and f uh, go to the astral world and fix what's going on in your astral space. If you have to do some house cleaning, do some house cleaning in the astral world. Um, and this is really great for people with overactive minds, especially for those who love cleaning. It's because you get to see what was really wrong in your life by removing some space junk. It's like, oh, this space, junk, space junk's right here. Um was affecting my communication skills with my clients. Take it out. Is it true that you can travel to... Yes! Yes, good question, good question, yes. Of course, they're gonna lead you to there, and once they led you to wherever they came from in the astral plane, then you can always go visit them back. It's it's a really good communication skills for you to have, and it's a really good um, um, exercise to stimulate your mind when you go into astral projection, especially seeing new things. We have to be stimulated, right? You are going to have fun going into their realm and their world because... Oh, Hubby's here. Hi, Hubby. Hello. <laughs> Because you're going to have to um, utilize their lifestyle in order to protect yours in a way. So you know how everyone is functioning. You know how the people are or the beings are in that realm. And now you can better understand where they're coming from. Because sometimes in these, in these realms, their form of communication and their form of welcoming is... Sometimes to cut off one of their limbs and give it to you, that's a form of hello. And sometimes, sometimes they pee on you. A lot of these beings, like in the movies, like, you know, peeing, you know, like the, like the pee comes out of the finger and like they squirt. It's like that sometimes too. Um, now you're accustomed to how they believe and now you're a little bit more knowledgeable. A lot of conjurers know about their conjures because they've traveled to their realm. And a lot of stuff aren't online. You just have to talk to a conjurer. And it's really funny how we were talking about content of spirit keeping on social media and on YouTube and on the Googler and on other search engine sites. We are barely even um, found or we can't find the description of our creatures. And it's very, very hard for us to do unless if we travel to the astral realm or do our divination, right? Overactive minds, too, can be a blessing in disguise for you to actually... When, once, you, once you are done with the first stage, your first time, and you can actually go into the astral plane, it doesn't matter if you have an overactive mind already. Your mind is already programmed to go inside the astral plane. At first, I had to be very, very disciplined. I still have ADD and ADHD and OCD. However, I found out ways to kind of diffuse me thinking so much during the day by just going to the astral world. It's like a video game. You know, like when people are so excited, you know, when you, you get your Twitch and um, your, your Switch, your Nintendo Switch, and you have a break now or you're off and like, yay, I can play Animal Crossing, stuff like that. Your mind's focused on one thing. 
my mind and my video game of choice is the astral world. So <laughs> I get very excited when I when I do astral travel. Who is on here now, by the way? Let me let me know, guys. I can't see the counter on there. I know Fox is on here and Candy. But Candy is being a little lurker in the background. Who else is on here? And if you guys are catching on um, later on to this stream, now it's just usually I do my courses in the beginning, and then I just do shenanigans in the in the end. So if you guys are catching this towards the right here right now or towards the middle, it's a pre-recorded live, so you guys can reference the pre-recorded live in another video or view it on your own time. So um, yeah, that is. We're going to be asking questions about astral travel now and have shenanigans. I don't have white noise in the background because a lot of the Pathfinders and you guys are saying that, um, especially for the hearing impaired, you guys can't either hear or read my lips or it's too loud for the people who um, can hear. It's just too loud, distracting, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we're going to try to reduce the white noise and customize the white noise. Um when we can. And white noise is really, really great for Astro Travel too, guys. Oh, the drone idea is smart. Oh, thank you. I never have any control over where I go when I leave my body and travel. Okay, do you know how to ground and center, Kristen? Chris, Kristen, ground, grounding and centering. You feel like, is, is it almost like a pull? Like when you enter the astral um, realm, is it like you just like continuing, keep on going up and further up and then like you just drift to go to the other side of the world or your city? How is that experience for you? I'm curious. Because I heard about those experiences too. I can help you. Just give me a shot. Give me a chance. <laughs> okay, so learn how to ground and center. You know, when you get out of your physical body, whether it's by a pulling mechanism or you envisioning being pulled out of your body, imagine that in reverse, okay? Or rise something up. Try... I need for you to try to lucid dream again and change your mind to res things up in the astral plane. When I mention caution tape, I use I, I I usually link that caution tape, everlasting caution tape, whenever I'm astral going to the astral. And in some instances too, the roof of where you're projecting, if you have a four wall radius, will lift up and you can actually escape. Now that right there can be scary. Just make sure, because whenever you actually are afraid or when you actually, if something is surprised, something surprised you or you want to go back to your physical body, you're going back to your physical body. If someone's waking you up, if there is an alarm, if, I don't know, a, a creature is scared the hell out of you when you're astral traveling or you're afraid of heights, you're going to go straight back to your body. However, Kristen, oh, you want more? <laughs> you went too far. You went too far. But Kristen, are you, um, do you have any spirits? Are you a spirit keeper yourself, Kristen? But sometimes when you are going into the celestial zone, okay, cool, cool, cool. Call out for them. Call out for them, especially if you have astral beings in the astral world. If you can't see them, perhaps maybe you never manifested them in that world, but make sure you try to manifest them before you... I know you're floating up there, but just continue. When that happened to me the third time... It happened to me more than once. I just, I just screamed. I just like, keep 
bring me back to my body. Let me see you. I'm beyond the clouds now. I think I'm entering the sound barrier. Like, can you help? Oh, nope. I see the moon. Yeah, I need your help. Please, please come. And usually if you have a dragon, they will like whisk you onto their back and or you can pull on their whiskers or whatnot. Um, if you have like an astral traveler, they'll help you out too into getting you into the place that you need to go. But learning how to ground and center actually can help. It's almost like being mag almost like a magnet towards the ground in a way. Um, just using the forces of grounding and centering. Okay, so did they, did they assist you before? Really? Are you saying, like, a friend or, like, another, like, going into another realm because the celestial zone i caught the celestial zone was when we go into space um and there is coming back if someone wakes you up but if you're being pulled towards the if you're being pulled towards space perhaps there's a celestial being that wants to bond with you or perhaps maybe your keep is referring you to a celestial being have you thought about that I don't know, it's just me. <laughs> I, I think it's a message, because my first time, I didn't, like, go all the way up to the space, uh, like, in space. Like, my 15th time, yeah, I was lost in space, like, yeah. Like, if, in real life, I would have been screaming. I would have been dead, actually, but... <laughs> okay, so, they aren't allowed as in you, so... Or going to another realm with a different type of being. You need to reiterate that for me, actually, if you can. Yeah. I want you to try something. Go into one of the sources that you get your conjures from, or even if you want to conjure, and do a divination on each of the conjures that you're interested in that are celestial beings, okay? Um, or universal beings. So look for those types of beings and see what divination tool actually kicks with that particular being and see if that's the right fit for you. If you can't, you know, ground and center and go back to Earth. <laughs> They just say no outright. Really intelligent beings, actually. <laughs> things are good, David. How are things for you? Weren't you just on here? Like, you were my first comment. Are you a bot, David? Say no, so I, so I know that you're not a bot. Yes, learn how to ground and center. It's really um, easy for you. I want to say easy. Yeah, it's pr it's it's pretty easy. Um, yeah, just ground and center, and then find out if you want another celestial. If you want another being, you can definitely you know if you're interested, look for a celestial being on on the sources that you get your conjures. But yeah, grounding centering is really really crucial. I tell a lot of my pathfinders that. Can someone come pick me up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they outright know. Wow. They have personalities. Maybe they're not astral beings. Have you thought about that? Possibly. Maybe they're not astral beings. Maybe they're not comfortable in the astral realm. Perhaps maybe with these with these beings that you have in your keep, perhaps maybe trying doing a journey to see if you can actually 
have a hint of their of their realm okay if you want really want to enter them um have you been do giving them offerings you, um the the particular realm the particular realm that you want to go to is it part of your keep uh keeps lineage Mediterranean Spa. Okay, so that sounds very familiar. Um, so either you were in the Middle East entering European um, peninsulas in the Mediterranean. Usually when you go to a Mediterranean bathhouse in the astral world, it's usually because either a calling came from you. Um, usually bathhouses are associated with Bannock's um, Hecate, um, Diana, and Hecate is really great for astral travel too because she is a goddess of the underworld, necromancy, whatever you can depict from, um, that place. But when you actually go to a bathhouse or anywhere in the Mediterranean in the astral plane, that means that there is a divine source that's pulling you towards that, that bathhouse because you just don't land and land automatically at a bathhouse in the astral plane. Something pulled you to go to the um, the bathhouse. So usually, or the I, I I keep on calling it bathhouse, a spa like thing. Um, that's where I met Hecate, and that's where I did my spiritual healing, and that's where she can bless people. And I saw other people there too. However, I was only there to visit. You know, she is my matron deity. However. I had other obligations and she understood what I was trying to say. It's like, yeah, I have all these other people that I need to talk to. Um, love you, mom. I'll, I'll talk to you later. And she's like, okay, bye. <laughs> One thing I am super intrigued by is building my astral home or astral temple. Yes. Yes. What you need to first work on is your memory palace google memory palace and you look at it on youtube memory palace is really great in order for you to bring things to the uh from the real world to the astral world it's nothing have to do with astral but once you kind of stimulate that brain and kind of work your brain muscles you can actually make your own astral home my astral home is actually my home um but there's phase um people who are connected to phase that have their astral kingdom that's made from i remember going to this one realm where the bones of giants were these pixies homes and they grew and it was so beautiful too i know it sounds morbid and macabre but they grew like vines over the giant's bones and you can feel the giant's energy in there too but it's working with the face so they're using it as a kingdom and of course there's like um the lag tights that's growing down. It was really beautiful, actually. Um, but home is good. Um, other than that, there are conjurers that can make your own astral space, too. Heads up. But if you make your own, just get inspired by whatever you can in movies. Then work on your memory palace and work on your memory to see if you can actually make a kingdom or a home in the astral plane. Okay, Kristen? Yes, looks like a bathhouse. See? <laughs> I've been there before, too. <laughs> Are you able to build your own corner of the astral? Okay, so yes. Yes, yes, Fox, yes. There are... You can definitely create an influence in the astral world and actually have your own territory. However... Um, there is things that can be either mediocre more than your powers are, or even overpowering your powers. So, uh, in the astral plane, especially if you're a spiritual practitioner, there are forces in the astral that you don't want to fuck with. Especially, especially if they're malicious and, and scary. <laughs> um... But you can build your own um, corner. I know that some of my friends do. It's working out for them. Although, 
at times you'll have like visitors just like in online games like you know like a straggler coming up or um a person who is connected to your lifestyle but never met you and their guides took them to that cor particular corner of the world um or of that influence so you start out in your in your own where you actually rest from from the astral plane so like your home but if your guide wants to take you to see another witch and this witch made her own and she reigns over a part of this astral world right well these these guys are taking them it's almost like you're a counselor or you're like a like they're trying to enter your fan club in a way and the guides guide them to you a lot of times the non-seasoned astral travelers will push them away it's like no i don't know you you're an intruder you're a foe you're an enemy those people i don't associate myself with because our guides that we're born with everyone's born with guides or our first life sometimes is our guides they're guiding them to us because our because their human is in crisis in, in, in a need of spiritual help why would i turn down the doors you know what i mean to these people especially if i reign and people look up to me on this corner of the astral world why would i say no to them you know so Fox, with these lands, you have to have the proper protection. Creepy Hollows has um, different precautions from the astral world, too. Lady Tia talked about it, too. She gets a lot of her conjures from the astral plane. Um, but also, you need to build up wards. You need to make sure that you can revisit your reigning territory. Um, because sometimes things will grow. Time is different sometimes in these different realms. So you need to act accordingly, okay? That word colonizing. <laughs> How are you guys with your dreams, by the way? Any weird dreams, Kristen, Fox? Where's Candy? Candly, Candly, Candy is usually on here and she's usually vocal. I wonder what's going on. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. So Y'all send me good vibes and positive energies. Last pack. Last pack of cigarettes in my life. I'm going to be making that commitment. I'm not going to swear because I might do it again, but... <laughs> Okay, it depends on how do you communicate with your keep on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you see a manifestation, an apparition? Do you feel them, like, senses-wise? Are you an, um, empathetic? Do you have a certain sensation on your body? How do they communicate with you? Really, JS? <laughs> really? You're not trying to be comical, right? <laughs> clear sentence. Okay, so then you can feel like either heat. Um, sometimes you can feel a breeze. You can sometimes feel like radi something radiating. Yeah, so I yes. So, when you feel those type of, ra like, radiating energies, 
um, with the question that you're asking, that could be mean a yes or no too. <laughs> I forgot. So just say, can I meet you in the in your realm? And if you feel a negative radiating energy, okay, sorry. If you feel a positive radiating energy, then go for it. If you feel as if that energy is telling you not to go, then you shouldn't go. Perhaps it's not the right place for you to go, or perhaps maybe you need to work on your path a little bit more. <laughs> well, have you thought about, like, online schools? Have you thought about, like, taking, you know, whatever certs that you need to go into your career path or your your dream job? Okay, so figure because what with, with that too with 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 feeling energy, you can all obviously be empathic too. If your brain and if your if your senses are telling you yes, then yes, go, because if if they're telling you no and you go to visit the realm, they already gave an answer, which is no. So don't go and do it because they said no. But if you get yes. Um, figure out your proper precautions in order for you to go into that realm, whatever being that you might have or that you have. Um, make sure that you know how they communicate. First, I recently got a Reiki bash, and <laughs> I didn't know their greeting was very like gory, so. <laughs> I will, I went back to my body because I got queasy. I'm like, okay, this is a lot of gore. <laughs> Let me just like leave. Um, but then I went back and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm acclimated now. <laughs> I'm okay with gore. I had to watch a lot of slasher films in order to <laughs> go to that. <laughs> I'm turning red right now because I was so nervous. Yes. So, usually with dreams, I will tell you guys to, like, Google your dream in the dream dictionary or something like that to see if that really means you going to college, JS. Yeah, I can. As I prepare another cigarette... Um, so, I talked to you, the reason why that I'm quitting is because I met, I'm, I met this medium, okay? This is how I know she's legit. Yesterday, I, I did a full day of no smoking, and I had to go and get my clothes from the dry cleaners, and I had to change in the car with the clothes for another meeting. So, um, for, like, a group meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting, right? And I didn't know she was a medium. And she was like, you need to quit smoking. It's very detrimental to you. I was like, are you watching my streams? Like, how do you know that I'm smoking? Um, and of course my keep like nudged me. He's like, she's right. You have to quit smoking. I was like, okay. It's a disgraceful habit. I told you, I don't even know why I do it anymore. It's not sexy. So, churns, if you're watching this, quit smoking. Don't smoke. Don't put a cigarette in your mouth. Don't. Don't be like me. Don't be like a mama. Like an old person like me, smoking cigarettes. Like, it's gonna be very detrimental, especially through this pandemic. No, don't do it. Yeah, it's no problem. See, I was talking to Fox the other day about um, the resources. The spirit keeping community's resources is very limited. Very, 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 very limited. And it takes historians, actually, to actually help conjures to kind of find where... I need water. I'm going to choke up to find um, out what about these creatures that we can actually conjure and what methods we have to use in, in order to conjure. And 
there is no sources. There's always online forums and <clears throat> it looks like a back door sometimes to getting viruses on your computer or it's like a um one of those poser kind of pages of a trend a trendy teen thing to do and usually that's the case a teenager or a person who was in middle school is like so you know fascinated with harry potter and they started to make like occult stuff which is understandable you know do whatever you want we're in the states do what you can however um we're not getting resources as much and for me the reason why kaiju mgt is so successful is because before paranormal self-defense and, and spirituality and other stuff we were a crisis management firm a client actually called us to do some paranormal investigations and we were already in the paranormal too like outside of our career so then we had to change our <laughs> we had to change our plaque outside the door to a paranormal firm well, we don't have the office anymore um, because of COVID. So we had a brick and mortar in DC, but now everything is digital and I'm seeing my clients face to face in their home to do their life coaching. So I like, I, I, for me, for me, um, I wish there was like a search engine. I wish there was, um, I wish Kaiju MGT and Cauldron Conjure uh, was a little bit more saturated so that people can actually find out different definitions and different types of lifestyles for other people to be inspired to become or get a conjure without having to worry as much. Um, not that much than other sites too, because even with Creepy Hollows, I love Creepy Hollows, but if y'all watching the stream Creepy Hollows, you know that I'm a merchant on there too. Um, so I'm going to give you guys positive feedback, which they actually are updating their, their, uh, website. They're my friends. They're, they're our buddies in Creepy Hollows. However, sometimes everything's everywhere on that forum and it's really hard to find some stuff. Um, but it's really educational to like, get their books and to read through the forums, um, and rants and rages and things of that nature. Um, however... It's going to take you a lot of time to get your resources, especially like viewing that one one web page for about like 30 minutes to an hour. Whenever I have nightmares and I get caught by an entity, I feel this weird ticklish sensation in whatever spot attacks me. I've experienced that. Yeah, so I got cut in one of my dreams recently and I felt it when I woke up. I just reekied. I just reekied, I had my husband reeky heal me because I felt the sensation uh, when I woke up. So I just had, any reeky healers can help you with that because sometimes a lot of people who are sensitive or who are like Kristen can feel that during the whole day. So once you become a reeky healer, you can like self-soothe and self-medicate in a way or self-treat your own um, spiritual wound. At times for dreams, it could be actually a spiritual attack. When you get nightmares sometimes of your enemies or your foes, most likely they're thinking about you or most likely they're pushing towards you being harmed either in your dream or in real life. So when I have attacking dreams or nightmares, because I don't like nightmares, um, when I do have them, I, <sighs> girl, I won to my tarot decks. I, I talk to Santa Morta to see what's going on. I talk to the seven powers. I take out the I take out the spirit board. I do my I, I light some candles. I do some sage. Just like what you guys see in witch talks, TikToks, that's what I do in real life too. Before um before even our firms. Like if I need if I need to like protect myself, I would do that for the whole day. Um, from that one dream because that one dream sometimes dreams can stick to you the whole day and sometimes you remember it throughout your whole life so with the dreams that I had for um, me getting cut I had to I had to reiki heal that situation yeah.
Okay, you are you a bot? Zay, uh, what? What? But thank you for. I'll check yours out. If you're not a bot, if you can answer if you're a bot or not, I'll go check it out. So yes or no. Are you a bot? If not, watch, I'm not going to get an answer. <laughs> that just threw me off right there, actually. <laughs> But yeah, try to do those kind of um, self-soothing, self-medication or self-treatments on Reiki. really beautiful. Oh, I want to say that Altoids. Someone's keep is hungry right now. So whoever is on here, y'all making me want to eat some candy. And my keep usually doesn't like candy. So whoever needs to feed their keep at the moment, go ahead and feed your keep. Give them a snack or something because I'm about to demolish my Altoids and that's a bad thing. So whoever's keep that you think is hungry, whoever one of y'all thinks that your keep is hungry or being, go ahead and go feed them. Or all of them. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so... It started for me, actual travel started for me in my, in my high school years, so my teen years. Um, my parents never taught me anything about actual travel, too, so I, I just, I just had to do it on my own, and I freaked out like you did, and I went straight back to my body. Yeah, see, it's, it's just all about figuring out and being acclimated towards that realm or in that realm you know Kristen you can't you just can't be like going in there not not educating yourself in astral travel like oh, I'm gonna go astral travel I'm gonna do a tutorial on YouTube no that's not how it goes Oh, guys, don't forget to, to go to cauldronconjure.com. Whoever, speaking of Reiki, whoever needs, like, uh, an energy boost, we do Reiki requests. Just go ahead and go to uh, Cauldron Conjure. And, yeah. Oh, shoot. Go ahead, guys. If you haven't yet, follow us on Instagram. Woo, woo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Probably went to go see Anubis. <laughs> you probably... It's really funny because I have Anubis up here and he's one of our deities as well. <laughs> oh, he's a dog like heads. Do you, did you get a um, Cerberus? Was it like a Cerberus kind of Cerberus kind of heads? Like like three heads or was it just one and were the legs humanistic legs or yeah
So you probably you're connected to a Nimbus. Are you do you worship to a Nimbus or do you practice with a Nimbus? If you don't, then you probably should. And and Hecate too. Perhaps they pulled you to there so that you, you can be part so they can be part of your life. I mean, you might be crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with being crazy? As long as you're crazy, as long as if you're crazy and not har harming yourself or other people, it, you're fine. I know some crazy people. Thank you guys so much for actually being patient with us and understanding. Okay, so what happened was for the last podcast was we had some serious issues with the internet. So we had to go to the car. And what we realized was that outside the house, our internet worked. Our Wi-Fi worked. Okay. <laughs> What's funny is that I was about to go bake some cookies right now. Like, I was about to dip y'all and go to the kitchen because I have Toll House cookies and I have an air fryer. Have you guys ever... Who owns an air fryer in here? Air fryers are the best. Um, but we I put aluminum foil on the grate and then I put the cookie, cookie dough from Tol, Nesty Toll House cookies and then you just put them in the air fryer. I do 360 for 20 minutes. Mm. <laughs> Fried chicken the next day tears me up and I'm so irritable when I eat anyone's fried chicken. Anywhere anyone's fried chicken. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I still eat it. Mmm. <laughs> I might have some fried chicken tonight. I don't know. I keep, I don't know. So I'm a regular Jane when it comes to food. So pizzas are fine with me. I'm a cheap date too. Ask Papa Rayo. Ask Alvin Rayo. I am a cheap date. Like, don't let my Instagram fool you guys. Okay, don't let that fool you guys. I am cheap with food. Takeout is my best friend. Okay? I don't really like eating out either, to be honest. And if it was if it's food, it's fast food, or if it's restaurant, it's takeout. Um that's just my OCD and ADD. I I did take etiquette classes. However, um, since I am, since ever since this, the COVID thing happened, it's really not safe for me to go outside anymore. Um, especially with A A P I hate, and with that, that's why I'm always in this office or at our private park. Because I know that I won't be harassed. So with me having OCD, I tend to eat things differently than other people. Um, it's just my coping mechanism. And people always ask me and people always judge. And it's not fair. It's okay for me to answer their questions. But for people to kind of like further ask me about my disabilities is something that I don't want to entertain and because I'm enlightening them but they're asking me these questions that don't make sense or they're trying to pry into my life like well why do you have it it's like because I have a disability I'm different than other people like you are different than other people too the last time was two months ago we went to Estrada which is our favorite one of our favorite uh, Italian restaurants and um this group possibly like i want to say like they are senior like senior because like, they're older but 
we think that older people would retain more wisdom than younger people, right? Nope. Ask me questions. Um, ask me if I took like a vaccine, the COVID vaccine. I was like, yes, yes, yes. It's like perhaps maybe you got that disability from that COVID vaccine. No, I grew up with a disability. I had, I was in special education when I was younger. I had an IEP and I have a learning disability. That's what I was like when I was younger. And people would like always paint pictures and, and try to tell your own life. Um, even in the spirit keeping community too, like people will tell you how you can control your keep. For me, it's different because I'm a life coach and I'm in seasoned with it. However, I'm not trying to force you guys. Like I, I always recommend, you understand? So that's something that I always wanted to put out. But my cigarette, this is my second cigarette of the day. Not because I'm stressed out. It's now habitual. Fox, it is habitual now. And it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm not stressed out. It's just habitual. Maybe my brain is telling me that I need nicotine. And vaping works, but I'm like done. In under a week, the vape juices don't last for a month for me. That's just me. Oh my god, what is- is that in my cup? Ew. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see what filters I can put on. Yes, I have filters. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I look like I should be one of the Faye realms. But... <laughs> that is cute. Oh my gosh, I should definitely stream with this filter on. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if there's a lag or something. Okay, there is. No, there's not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> now I got a comment back. Yeah, so this OSB helps me with streaming to YouTube. Because we're not up to a thousand followers, uh, subscribers yet. So guys, if you have anyone who is in the spirit keeping community shoot them our way so we can make it to 1,000 subscribers because there'll be really good incentives for 1,000 subscribers. That means I don't have to use the OBS and that means we get to do a giveaway. <laughs> I know y'all love giveaways. <laughs> Not only that, it's to grow our story keeping community as well. Um, not uh, like us, like Hydro MGT, I'm talking about in general. There's not that many sources out there, and with the help of spreading the word, helps everyone out in the spirit keeping community to better understand different beings and better understand the paranormal and paranormal self-defense, as well as manifesting your goals through laws of attraction. So, if you guys haven't. Go ahead and spread that. And if you guys haven't yet, please give me a thumbs up on the stream. I, I'm liking these streams now. I am. I 
thought about like vlogging the other day and I recorded something and I was like, no, I have to edit all this. And it's, if you guys don't edit and if you guys aren't YouTubers, um, or if you guys are, then you guys know the struggle with editing. And especially if you guys have jobs. <sighs> I just wish I had more time. I do. However, with the streaming, it's just going to be a little bit more convenient because we're going to be taking field trips to different sites. And we have an upcoming project that you guys might be excited about. And yeah, you guys, I, I know you guys might be excited about this because everyone can watch it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> That's the hint I can only give you guys. Um, but yeah, so I've been really, really busy with, with, uh, Pathfinders and with, oh, we have an upcoming blog up that's going to be posted soon to actually help you guys with your laws of attraction to anyone, not just Pathfinders. It's just to better get you guys introduced to our blogs too, because you guys are missing a lot from the blogs and you guys aren't opening the, the blog post and there's some blog posts too and I have a bone to pick with y'all Pathfinders. Y'all aren't getting the locked special blogs especially for you guys. Special for you guys. Um, and I always push that for you guys but there are going to be blog posts that are coming up that are exclusively for Pathfinders and for just regular viewers. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. <laughs> we do. We do. Also, we do Ricky in two minutes, a two minutes, and we do do small investigations, which is part of the project that I want to talk to you guys about later on down the road <clears throat> when there's a green light. And. That's something that, I guess, it's just really funny because I was talking to our team last week and it's like, isn't it funny that more and more people are, are interested in spirit keeping? I was like, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty surprising. And when you Google spirit keeping or spirit keeping lives, a lot of us pop up, um, but only like four people. I know of herbs and altars pop up and y'all want to see a collaboration with of herbs and altars. However, that's two different time zones and the tag will we have to have to talk to Dorian um in a more private time. So Dorian, if you're checking this this live out right now from Herbs and Altars and you wanna collab with us, shoot us a message here. <laughs> no, shoot us a message here. There we go. Yes, no problem. <laughs> My gosh, I don't know. Okay, so either it's fried chicken tonight for dinner, pizza again. Oh, pizza. I love pizza. Pizza is my kryptonite. No, potato chips. Potato chips, pizza, french fries. Do you guys like Brussels sprouts? I like, I like, um, Brussels sprouts. I'm craving Brussels sprouts. Maybe I'll, I'll get a rotisserie chicken and then I'll get like Brussels sprouts to make. And then I'll put some Parmesan on top of the Brussels sprouts after it's done. And then, yeah, have a starch. What's starch? Potatoes or rice? I don't know. I'm thinking about dinner now. For some odd reason. It's five, that's why. So I should probably be going to do that. And guys, if you haven't yet, if you guys are viewing this as a pre-recorded video, please hit that subscribe button and bell notification button to get notified whenever I'm streaming or whenever Aldwin has a video out or whenever we have content out on the channel. If you guys like this stream, hit that thumbs up button and I will grant you seven years of good luck. 
note that I can't package good luck, so it's the energy and thought that counts, right? Anyways, I wish y'all luck for seven good years. I love you all so much for watching. Stay confident and fabulous. Stay safe and mask up. Mwah. <laughs>